What can the equipment out there on farms do today that most people might not know about that makes the land more productive? It comes in a couple of different forms. What we're finding, and, and it, actually some of this discovery is still going on right now, is everybody has known, in the, for example, in the spring, uh, let's say in the Midwest, that there is a optimum spring uh, time to plant. And if you plant, and most farmers will talk about a two-week window, and if you plant within that two-week window, you in fact will have much higher yields than if you're on either side of that. What we're also finding is even inside that two-week window, there's a great variation between parts of it. Getting the data first off from previous years on what the yields are, and then continuing to, to, to better understand what is that optimum time, and then from an equipment standpoint, making the equipment so that you can go through the fields faster, quicker in order to optimize. That's certainly one area. Uh, second area is on the, the harvest side, uh, from an equipment standpoint, continuing to make combines, for example, more efficient where we have less and less grain loss. And then uh, the, from an equipment standpoint, capturing all the data from soil chemistry types, from uh, agronomic practices, having that all recorded so that an, an agronomist can analyze it and continue to tweak the prescription so next year they can get a higher and higher yield, that will be another part of it. Uh, some people have heard about precision agriculture. I know there are still some people who haven't really heard about it and might be surprised to know that a tractor today sometimes has a person in the cab only in case he's needed, and he might not be needed. It's an amazing thing. How precise are we getting? So uh, that, that is correct on the equipment that we have, whether it be large combines, large tractors, uh, large sprayers. We'll have a GPS, proprietary GPS, global positioning system in there uh, that will enable what we call auto steer. So the, the operator does not put the hands, we don't even want them to touch the steering wheel. And pass to pass, uh, going down a field, so if he was going down a field one mile this way and then coming back then a, m a mile this way and let's say you had a 60 foot boom on the back so there's 30 feet on each side, there'll be about a two inch overlap and that's all it is. And prior to this precision ag, a farmer would have overlapped by at least six feet 